Hello there again everyone, it's me. Well, it's the last one. It's the last one for this particular journal. But what I would like to say is a couple of things really. One is don't forget that there's a, another new tutorial starting next Saturday. Um, and it's to show you a different type of envelope journal. So the next one's going to be a concertina one, but again, using the envelopes. The second thing is that up there, you've got home, you've got videos, and you've got playlists. If you have a look in playlists, you'll find that I have collated all the videos for this particular project, all under one heading envelope journal tutorial. I think I've called it um, but you'll find all the videos listed in the playlist so it saves you having to scroll through all my previous videos to try and find this particular project okay so that you've got it easy access up there or of course if you have a YouTube channel then you can save them to your own listing um, and uh, the, the way in which you do that is underneath the video here you've got a little button that says save and then you can save to watch later which is an automatic thing that YouTube have got set up um, or you can create your own playlist and save them all to there. The third thing is if you make the um, journal and you share pictures of it to your own Facebook page or a group page a um, couple of things that I would ask is one could you let me know so that I can come and have a look um, or if you make your own video showing the journal that you've made give, give me a shout because it's always lovely to see how everyone else interprets doing something like this so it's always lovely to go and see and um, and also if you could sort of mention that it was my video that you watched as well initially that would be really very much appreciated um because it might encourage other people to come and have a look and and have a go at doing it themselves and lastly <coughs> and most importantly thank you all very much for coming along and joining me on the journey of making this journal and thank you all very much for all the lovely comments that you've left me um, I know the lady in America, you can't have me, me Kath Kidston mug. <laughs> it's mine. <coughs> um, sorry, little joke there. Um, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you've learned a few extra little bits and pieces as we've gone along. Okay, so down to the nitty gritty. I'm now going to talk to you about some of the decorative bits that you can do inside your journal. Now I'm going to be utilising the rest of my digital kit which is all the little extra bits of pockets and notebooks and tags and circles and hearts and envelopes and bookmarks and blah 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 blah. Right, so those are just a few of the pages. What I would suggest is that if you have bought the kit um, cut all these things out so that they're all out ready and ink them up so that's a job for when you're watching a film on the telly or something you know that sort of thing and then you've got them all ready prepared okay I, I have a couple cut out ready to show you so to the inside so in the previous video I did talk about putting that strip on the spine here and I've done the same on the inside too all right and again talking about those scraps of paper don't throw them away what I've done here is I've cut out this rectangle from some of the leftover strips and I'm going to make this into a belly band on the inside cover so that's going to stick across there I've also punched out uh, a semicircle at the bottom, which I've just placed a little bit of glue on the, the back side edge, um, just along the bottom here, so that, if I use this as the example, you can slide stuff underneath there. It's just when you come to use the belly band and you stick something underneath there, it could have a tendency to fall out the bottom. So if you've got the circle at the bottom here, that just acts as a little bit of a stopper, okay? I've already inked up 
this rectangle and I've measured it to the right size so I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to use my PVA glue because I want a fairly strong glue but I still want to use the liquid glue because I want to be able to manoeuvre and manipulate this so that I've got it in the right place and I've just placed a little line of glue on each end and then I'm going to flip it over and put it roughly halfway down now there is no reason why you can't do a vertical belly band it doesn't have to be horizontal and I'm happy with that and then again in the previous video I talked about the freebie that's on my Facebook group this was one of the freebies that I gave them in the um, pages of words and things to use so I've just cut it out rounded up the corners and inked it up and I'm just going to stick that on there um, it was very very popular um, there was a, a stamp I think it was um, about the story beginning and uh, I could never find it or it was way out of my budget and uh, so I made me own so and I'm just going to stick that on to there so that's one decorated and done this next page here I've put one of the the pockets on the front here now then I'm going to come to the pocket in a moment but what I've done or I've started doing throughout the journal is I've just ripped up this is a bit of dictionary page and I've just ripped up the dictionary page um, just you know a little bit at a time I've got a bit to hand. Hang on. I'll use a bit of music paper to show you. So when I'm ripping paper like this, I'll just rip it like that, just very slowly, and I can then work out exactly where I want to have the paper ripping. If I end up with any odd shapes that I don't like, of course I can go back in and go and tear away that little bit more, but I only do it just a little bit at a time. And then I ink up all the edge, and because I've ripped it, it sort of revealed all the, almost like the inner layers of the paper. So when you ink it, it actually comes up quite dark because it's thinner on these edges where you've ripped through the layer of the paper and so this edge can come up quite dark but I've just laid it on there with a little bit of cheesecloth behind now there are other things that I'm going to be doing throughout this journal and I will do videos of them as I go along so I am actually going to be adding some more things onto there all right so then I've got this pocket here now the pocket is part of the kit and there's three of them on the page and that's how they cut out all right so it's just a rectangle but then you cut out the two little corners to reveal a panel here a panel here and there's a panel there okay now if you have a look the panels themselves they've got a line so that will fold behind and in fact let me just do that so that you can see so that one folds across and this one folds up and you can use your bone folder once you've um, folded those over to just burnish those crease marks to be a little bit harder now sometimes if you leave it square like it is there and you turn it over to the front sometimes that little bit of square just pokes out at the side you don't want that so you cut it at a slight angle all right I'll show you open in a minute now you've got the same when you come to stick the pocket down if I turn it over this little bit here at the top also sticks out and so we want that angled as well so again I would just take my scissors and just snip off an angle so if I now open it up 
I've got an angle here and an angle here where it was straight before. I'm also going to cut a little tiny angle there. Now this is called tapering the corners and it just helps to give a neater edge to the um, corners of the pockets and to the top of the pockets, okay? Now if we have a look, I'm just going to turn to a new page. Let me just find one. Um, so I've got stuff stuck in already. There we go. If we have a look at this, this actual pocket is too wide. Once that's turned over and that's turned up, it's actually too wide to fit the actual background of my page. So I know that I need to fold it here to fit the width of my page. So can you see that little crease mark? So I, where I've got this spine bit here, this extra tab bit, I need to create a new one further in. So let me just unravel it again. So I want my pocket to finish there. So I'm going to fold that over where I've creased it, but you can use a pencil and mark it. Now that flap is actually too wide, so I'm just going to trim off some of the excess. And I'm going to cut out that corner like I did on the opposite corner. And then I'm going to taper that corner and that one and that one. Okay, so I've now got a pocket that I can fold these flaps in and up and that will now fit on that page. What I can do is I can put a tiny little dot of glue on the bottom part of those two flaps and then fold that bottom one up so that is now held in place. Let's wait for the glue to take. Nah, it's not going to take, is it? It's always the same. When you're doing it, when you're not recording, it sticks straight away. Oh, well, it's held a little bit, but you get, you get the, the gist, okay? So that's now held in place. So then I would put glue along here, here and here, and then I would stick that to my page, right? There are a couple of things that you can do before you stick it in place. One is to ink it up. The second is to stitch it. The third, and back to the beginning, is to attach some lace, some trim, some buttons. It's really a case of, again, you using your own imagination as to what you can do with that. All right, so that's an example of what I've done there. Now, I've, I've noticed this a couple of times. I've had people go, oh, I forgot to stitch it. Don't worry, draw on your own faux stitching lines. So that hopefully you can see here, I actually got a brown pen and I just drew some straight lines. Now it's not the same as stitching, um, running it through the sewing machine, but it gives a similar effect. And if you've forgotten to do it and you want that stitch look, then just draw some little straight lines on your pockets and then they will kind of look stitched. Okay, so that's that pocket. Now there is a longer version as well inside the kit, which would go that way on, which would then stick on your page that way. So that you've then got a side entrance pocket rather than a top entrance pocket. All right, but again, go through the same process. You'll need to measure the length. You might need to readjust and cut it down to size, fold into your two side flaps and then the bottom flap, and then decorate it up, ink your edges, do your stitching, do any of those things that you want to do. Then you can see that inside of there, I've put this little packet pocket and I've actually just quickly fussy cut out one of the flowers from the kit and I've stuck it onto the front of the packet pocket. Sorry, whilst we're on this page, 
Do you remember on the front I cut out this piece of card here from one of the greetings cards and I've got this now left over. What I would actually do is cut that off and then I would actually glue something like this to the front of that bit of card and then I can round the corners off, ink it up, stitch it, do all those decorative bits and then that can sit in that top loading pocket. You can even add punched holes to make it into a tag shape all right, and add ribbons and bits and pieces. So that's what I would do in there. Here again, I've just added a little bit of music paper down at the bottom just to break up the monotony of the whole of the plain page. On the papers themselves here, there's these little rectangles and I actually cut one of them down, inked it up, and then from the word sheet I cut out the word January and I stuck it on the edge of the page so that it now acts as a tab so you could do those graded down the remainder of the pages so then I could put February there and on the next page put March and then on the next page put April and then in the next section carry that on um, but it's just a nice way of doing tabs. Another way of doing it is to actually cut out that piece of card and then fold it in half and wrap it around the page itself. You could then cut out just the word Jan rather than the whole word January or whatever word you want to use. Here, this is the little envelope that's in the kit. It looks a bit of an odd shape when you see it on the page. Um, but it does make a pretty little envelope and what I've done here is I've got a used stamp and uh, a UK stamp and I stuck that on I'd got um, you know a, a rubber stamp and stamped the the postcardy postmark bit ripped out a bit of paper which is where you would write an address punched out a couple of circles on the back so then the little corner bit then just sits underneath those circles to just hold it in place. Don't forget when you're inking something like this up, there's this crease here. Fold that back on itself. Run your little dibby dabber off the edge of the paper because if this was a vintage envelope, that would actually show signs of age there as well. So that's the little envelope. And I've just paper clipped that onto the edge of the page. This is obviously where my booklet is. And then don't forget with the booklets that it's only the card back that goes inside the pocket, not the pages. The pages sit on the outside, otherwise it ends up too bulky. But here I just cut out another one of the words and I did a fishtail end, which means it's that little banner shape. Stuck a little bit of the um, cheesecloth on there and a little bit of a lace flower and that just again breaks up the monotony of the whole of the page and maybe even gives you a starting point to start writing about something. That's another one of those little squares that I used as the tabs at the beginning. Used the word notes, did a little bit of doodling, but the problem with my doodling is the ink went through onto the other side of the page, so it means that I would have to stick something on there to kind of cover that over a bit. This is another one of the pockets that's in the kit, which is this one that I've cut out here. And again, you've got the two lines there, which is where you would fold those over from side to side. And then fold up the bottom bit. But again, you would need to just taper off those corners because with them being square, they show through at the front. So just taper off there and taper off there. Now then, before you actually glue it up, one of the things that I like to do is I like to do a thumb hole on the front so that if anything is inside the pocket, you can reach into it easy with the thumb hole. So this is just a circle punch turned upside down placed halfway down 
and making sure that I'm on equal sides of the, the pocket so that I'm roughly in the centre. Punch. Now this little half circle, if it was a, a decorative bit, I might even go as far as saving that because remember the stopper on the first page? Ideal little stoppers those. Um, but it depends how, how much you are about keeping sort of bits of rubbish really. Okay, I would then ink, ink it all up, fold that side in, place a little glue along that one straight edge and place glue on this straight edge here because these overlap and then glue that in place there and then place glue on this bottom edge and have the flap on the outside so then when you turn it over you've got this little pocket now what you can do is when you come to stick a pocket like this onto your page if you place glue on the back just around the three sides it means then as well that you've got a pocket directly behind the pocket as well as the pocket for the pocket because we love a pocket <laughs> all right so that's that one and again i've just decorated it up with two layers of lace this time i've got a thinner one on the top a fatter one on the bottom and then a little bit of trim i've got my bits of music paper to make it look that bit more vintage i've added the words to do and list on there i've even stuck on um, a little butterfly charm i've done the glossy accent dobs on the dobs <laughs> on the on the flowers and then here i put some glossy accents on and then i'd got some of those micro beads so i just sprinkled the micro beads which went everywhere i have to tell you i mean like everywhere so i sprinkled some micro beads on there got rid of the beads that went everywhere um and just left it to dry so that those micro beads now act as the center of that flower This one, what I'm going to do here, let's pull that paper clip out, is these are three of the hearts that are in the kit. And so I'm going to place this straight edge parallel with the straight edge of the page there. And then I'm going to use this straight edge, join the points together, but have that straight edge parallel to this part of the page here. And then the third heart, I'm going to stick in the middle on top. And I've got like a petal heart shaped little tuck spot. So then, it's me little doobers. So then I've got a little tuck spot there for just tucking a few bits and pieces into. So that's that one. And then the last one. That I'm going to show you is this is the big square that's in the kit and I've just folded this in half I've inked up all the edges both on the outside and the inside and then I'm going to place glue around the two straight edges there not the angled edge but the two straight edges and I'm going to stick that in the corner down there and this is known as a, a flip pocket so that flips up so that you've got somewhere to write in there but it then also acts as a little tuck pocket as well for you to add extra bits and pieces so again this is all about you playing doing what you want um, just have a go and um, see what you come up with and that's the end of this one so the next time I'll see you will be for the next tutorial next Saturday I hope you've enjoyed this little mini series um, and that you might even consider subscribing to my channel so that you get the notifications just tap on the little bell as well and they'll give you a little ding dong to say that I'm uh, I've uploaded another video 
Um, I hope that you might even consider joining the Facebook group if you fancy it, because we do have all sorts of bits and pieces going on there. I have got some uh, online workshops lined up very shortly, um, but I will do a video of those as well. But that's it, really. We're done. It's up to you guys now to create, play, have fun. Okay, I'm off for a brew now. My throat's going now. <clears throat> Enjoy, and I'll see you all again soon. Ta-ra for now. <laughs>